Part 2, Living with Net, Establishing a New Normal. To help raise awareness about neuroendocrine tumours, or NET, an international panel of multidisciplinary experts involved in the care of NET recently convened to provide their perspective and discuss key unmet needs surrounding this rare type of cancer. Once patients are diagnosed with neuroendocrine tumours, they can experience a range of emotions. Being in the care of NET specialists and nurses and in contact with NET patient groups can make a big difference in their experience and the outlook and outcome of their disease. Um, one of the questions I wanted to ask you, Dr Singh, was about the, um, the psychological effect of um, a NET diagnosis or a patient living with NET. I mean, you can imagine how alarming it could be for a patient to, first of all, go through years of, of troubling symptoms, not knowing what's happening, then you finally get a diagnosis, and it's a diagnosis of a neuroendocrine cancer. Sometimes we also see some disbelief. I can't imagine this. Okay, I've got some diarrhea. I, I am sick, but it's not cancer. I can't have a tumor. I've been living for so long with this, with this disease or with this, uh, this sickness. I think even with... There is a second step which a lot of patients still experiences after the diagnosis being maybe not optimally handled medically or otherwise and then there is another period where they're dissatisfied and their treatments are maybe not the best until they are then referred to a, a centre which has experience in that. There's an incredible amount of distress after they've been through this diagnostic journey that we've dis discussed um, they're relieved to be at a place or a centre where somebody's aware of NETS and then they want to know what the next steps are. So I think a key piece of advice we want to give, and I'm sure you would all agree with, to our patients, would be to be involved in their care. I think it's really important that we involve families as well and, fam and, yes. and patient carers, and so that's really important. It's not yes. just the patient and its journey, it's besides the patients. Everyone who's together with the patients, it's really important that we involve them as well. What do you feel? I mean, tell, tell me a little bit about, about the reaction of patients when they do come and when they've had that diagnosis, when they've been living for a while, and they realise that you know, this is a chronic disease. We're often there when the physician comes in and says, what are your symptoms? Okay, this is a prescription, go home, go to the pharmacy, and, and come, I will come, come back and see you in a couple of months or something. And then they go out, and then there's a nurse. Mm. And she will take the blood sample, and then the patient will say, oh, well, he told me this, and then, oh, I know, I can tell you about this. And, and you feel confident, you want to talk about it. The nurse role, is vitally important in, in, in the treatment and management because you are a friend, they become a friend and no one wants to talk about your toilet habits, you know. It doesn't actually, it's, it's embarrassing and it's awful for them because if they don't get sympathy because they can't really explain it to people, you know, no one wants to hear that you've got diarrhoea and go to the toilet all the time. Many patients have symptoms for long term and they get, they get used to them. For example, if you ask them, how do you feel? They say, well, I'm, I'm well, I feel well. But if you focus on specific symptoms, such as how many times you open your bowels, how many times you go to the toilet, and they say five, six times a day, even during the night, and then you realize that those people stay at home and they cannot go to a restaurant just to enjoy a meal, which is a simple quality of life issue. It is a problem. Unfortunately, they become quite resilient and robust in their outlook once they've had the diagnosis and are, and are being treated. Um, because they look physically well despite tumour burden and disease inside them. And I think when we're really dealing in this situation our goal is to try to help the patient to learn how to live with the diagnosis, how to live with having NEDS. Can I bring you in Dr Falcone? Sometimes patients have to go for second surgeries. Does, does that have a psychological impact on them? The problem is that they feel that they were not treated in the proper way at the beginning. Yeah, I agree with uh, Dr. Falcone. Uh, the, the real problem for, for, for the patient is to... Uh, he was hoping he was cured and then he has to, to go to another operation. So there is a balance between expertise for the second opinion and on the other hand the respect of the previous surgeon who really uh, saw the situation. And so far is uh, very, again, uh, is a place for discussing all together in order to have the proper way to approach the situation. And you have to encourage that this, the relationship with your treating doctor and team is pivotal to 
a good outcome. And they are, that trust or that relationship will help them endure everything. And it's so key. What I'm doing, what I'm trying to do uh, with the med patients with, and with their family to try to explain to them about the disease, the treatment, the journey with the net and uh, to reassure them. You are learning with your doctor and I think that enables both the doctor and the patient to learn together and to better deal with the disease. So I think it's really important for net patients especially when we're dealing with an uncommon tumour for them to be involved in their care. Once patients are diagnosed with neuroendocrine tumours they can experience a wide variety of emotions being seen by a specialist, either a doctor or a nurse, and in support with patient groups can really help them with their journey. And for patients with NET, it helps them if they're actually able to take part in the treatment and the management of their disease.